Creating a lush, gorgeous garden isn't complicated. Watch this video to understand why. Just follow these tips and tricks and you'll have a great garden as well. It's that easy. Gardeners have this concept of creating a dream garden. And the dream garden is, you know, you get lots of compliments. The garden looks good. The garden is flourishing. Everything has these beautiful colors. Everything is working together. And when you show up, it looks effortless when somebody has this gorgeous garden. Now, the questions are, how do I get past a, a, a really bad garden? How do I get past an average garden? How do I get to that next level? Believe it or not, garden design, plant choice, and soil preparation are the three answers, the three big things. So let's start with uh, plant selection. My preference is to have a minimum of five of the same plants growing into the same space. So they're filling in this entire space as a species. They work together, the roots are intertwined, they are super healthy because they're working together. Um, English ivy is a very aggressive example, but it has filled in this whole area here without any problem. So I'm looking at now, I have, let's say one and a half square meter of English ivy here. I don't have to do much to this. It'll look after itself. As long as it gets enough water, it will be fine. So I've got this section of my garden completed. So now what I want to do is have some accent colors next to it. The plant selection and the plant grouping will make your garden look really good. A lot better than having ones, one of this, one of that. It's just too hard to control. So when you're doing these mass plantings, you're, you're, you're finishing off an area of your garden. English ivy is good against next to uh, walkways. It's good on walls. So you have to make your plant choices according to what they do as a species or a variety. Idea of having these plants do well for, let's say, 15 years is the fact that this soil that is in this space was conditioned. It was, uh, compost was added, manure was added. So everything here has a, a charge. The soil has a charge for the next few years. And that is very important. Your starting point is the soil preparation, loaded with energy, allowing the plants to look good for many years. You can upgrade by adding something on top of these. Just leave the plants in the ground, put your compost on top of the plant itself. It will heal itself and grow through it. The next thing about these beautiful gardens is that the people are layering it. And what I mean by that, they have different heights, they have different textures, they have different uh, flowering periods. Everything is textured, layered, designed, understood what's gonna happen to each plant in what time of the year and so on. So there's a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge that has allowed the gardener to create such a masterpiece. Now what do you do when your garden looks really crappy? Why? You know, I have crappy soil. Okay, you have crappy soil. I get it. You have made really bad plant choices you haven't covered areas completely. There's like spaces where the sun can get in. There's spaces where weeds can grow in. So this idea of having a plan, like I would prefer a gardener who's starting out to have four square meters. Don't do your whole yard, start with four square meters. Understand the pattern of how it works to have these beautiful lush gardens that are completely contained to each other. Think of it as a paint by number picture. So yeah, this English ivy is number 17. There's 13 spots in this property that have the number 13. So I will plant the English ivy there and that area will be filled in. So if I can increase that number of the paint by, paint by numbers to let's say a thousand different varieties of plants, my garden all of a sudden is gonna be a lot health, healthier because it has that biodiversity element to it. It's going to attract different insects. It's going to attract different uh, reptiles. It's going to attract all kinds of uh, life and energy just because it's biodiverse.
there's going to be solutions. There's going to be um, for plants to heal themselves. There's going to be cooperation in the roots. There's going to be insects that are pollinating all the time. It just attracts a, a diverse change in your garden. It just makes everything so healthy. So if you are stuck on this idea that I have a crappy garden, I'm not a good gardener, I, have a, I don't have any green thumbs, whatever it may be, look at it differently. Understand this mechanism of having a great garden in four square meters. Once you've attacked that four square meters and you've understood how it works, how these gardens fill in, how they send something higher up to provide shade for below. Once you understand all that, then you're way ahead of the game. So you've got four square meters of perfection. Now you can tackle the rest of your garden. It's a learning curve and this learning curve is all about getting the knowledge and the experience to, to have these lush gardens. And of course, you know, watering is a big issue. Do you have enough water to have a garden like that? The plant choices can help you with that, is having lots of succulents or plants that don't need a lot of water. So the next time you see somebody's lush garden and you're just super surprised how they've done it, those are the, the main tricks. Soil prep, plant selection, plant grouping, and diversity. If you have those four elements in your garden, you're going to be way ahead of the game. It's a learning curve, it's a knowledge curve, but it's not unattainable at all. Start small, get that perfection down, and uh, don't spend too much money because now, for example, I can come in here and take a ton of cuttings here for the English ivy and put it somewhere else in the garden. So if you actually have a garden that's sort of like a nursery and unfortunately you're going to be spreading the same species in your garden because you don't have many species but at least having something growing lush filling in spaces will make a huge difference difference in any garden swap with people trade with people Try to get your plant material as best as you can. If you find something on the side of the road, look at it, analyze it well. Maybe this is uh, going to work in the garden. A lot of this stuff we have in this garden here is from the side of the road um, in remote places where people just dump all their plant material in the ditches and they take off. Everything grows in this place, so we do have a huge advantage. But any, you can grow anything anywhere if you follow certain principles of putting the work in, following certain procedures, and ending up somewhere where you can learn from your mistakes and improve your mistakes. You can always add compost to this. You can always add energy to every plant. Just make sure that you have the principles correct that you're working towards a final goal and it will work out perfectly.